What's up, soldiers? Wobbly Yonder. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about getting fired at BMT. Now, let's just take a minute to remember all those people who have been chewed out in the past, all of those dorm chiefs. Let's just take a second to remember those people because they are no longer with us because they got recycled. Now, let's jump back into the video. Basically, at BMT, you won't get in trouble for something unless the MTI has already told you not to do that something. This is pretty much how it works. The MTI will tell you or teach you something and then he'll ask you to do it. Now during your first couple weeks, your first couple of days, if you mess up like the first time, eh, you might be okay, you might get away with that. But if you mess up the second time, the third time, the fourth time, that's when people are gonna get in your face. That's when you're gonna start doing push-ups and flutter kicks and burpees. That's when you start getting in trouble. It's because you're not getting it. And the reason why they get on you is because if you can't handle this one thing, if you can't fold this shirt, how do we expect you to put you to work somewhere? How can we trust you to fix a multi-million dollar plane, give somebody a shot if you're medical, fix a computer, do all this other advanced stuff? So they start off simple. They start off with a simple task, and if you don't get that, then they're gonna get on you. That way you can pick it up faster because you know that it has consequences if you don't. I'm just justifying why MCIs are the way they are. It's not like it is a fun thing. You're still gonna be like kind of pissed off. You're gonna be kind of upset. You're gonna be in your feelings, but at least understand why. At least try to make sure that you don't do it again. Now, the more advanced ass rippings happen when you start messing up on bigger things. If you start breaking rules, like that's even bigger. Like we have big rules about BNT about you cannot have outside food. You can't read letters at night and stuff like that. So if they catch you ever doing like stuff like that, then you're gonna be in trouble. We had one guy on our flight who got recycled four weeks back into our flight because he got caught stealing peanut butters and protein bars from the defect. That's probably like one of the bigger offenses. Like if you get caught doing that, then you'll be in some serious trouble. Now it's not like he was like sneaking in there at night, grabbed the peanut butter and then he like snuck out. It's just when we're at Chow Hall, we have all the condiments out there. We have the peanut butter, the jelly, you got your honey, all that stuff. So some people they grab like extra peanut butters and stuff for like the protein and then they stuff them in their pockets like when nobody's looking and then they leave the defect with them. Now nobody's gonna go through your pockets because nobody really cares that much about what's in your pockets. But if they ever do catch you, if they ever see you have it with you or they see the wrapper in the dorm or something, then that's when you'll be in trouble. And then also when you're heading out of the defect at night for dinner, every dinner you're gonna be given a protein bar. You can take these protein bars and you can eat them when you get back to your dorm, but you cannot save them. Like you can't like stock them. Some people do and it's up to you. If you wanna risk it, if you wanna risk your Air Force career over a protein bar, then go ahead and do that. So this guy, I guess he decided to steal peanut butter and protein bars and he got caught. And he wasn't the only one either, but all his friends who we thought was his friends, they ratted him out and they didn't take the blame for it. He just took the blame and then he left his flight. They graduated four weeks ahead of him and he's sitting here in his second week looking stupid. Now I'm not gonna talk too much trash about him, but I'm just saying that was a, a dumb decision that he consciously made. You all can easily avoid being recycled if you simply don't get in trouble like just follow the rules that's all you got to do for eight weeks now another way you can get recycled is not if you're getting in trouble not if you mess something up but if you hurt yourself i'd say about at least 50 to 60 percent of the people who do get recycled weren't even in trouble it's just they hurt themselves they got a fractured leg or the sprained ankle or the common like fractured hip or something because you're walking all the time and so what they'll do is they'll send you to med hold med hold is basically a squadron at bnt that's designed to hold all the sick people, all the injured people. So you go there, you're separated from your flight, you go there for until whenever you get better. And then once you're better, you get put back into a new flight that was in the same week that you left. So if you injured yourself in the third week, you go to med hole for two weeks. You don't go to the fifth week, you go back into another flight that's in their third week. However, if you get sent to med hold and you get out within a week, then you get sent back to your flight. The worst thing about getting recycled is not the ass chewing, it's not getting in trouble, it's your family. Because they're gonna have to get new plane tickets, they're gonna have to make new hotel reservations, they're gonna have to reschedule their whole plans just because you decided to mess up. Some people have asked me this before, I've answered it a few times, but not all the time. Some people have asked me how I got fired as dorm chief. Because I've talked about dorm chief before and I've mentioned that I got fired. Dorm chief is basically the top person in your flight. Anytime anybody gets in trouble, dorm chief gets in trouble too. I was doing pretty well. I pretty much handled a lot of the problems that were coming my way. I was dodging bullets. I was making sure people were on point. I was making sure I was doing my job. The reason I got fired was because, the reason I got fired was basically I left my security drawer on my bed. During the day when you're just like clipping strings, folding clothes, you're allowed to take everything out of your drawers, all your drawers out. You can kind of just lay everything out, get everything straight, make sure everything looks good. So I'm in the middle of doing that. The whole flight has all their stuff out. We're all doing our work. When three or four people walked by and I said, where are you guys going? They said, we're going to the dry cleaners. And I said, oh, I gotta go too. So let me grab my uniform. I grabbed my uniform, grabbed my web belt, put it on, and we're heading down to the dry cleaners. 
I'm down on the dry cleaners now. I'm turning my stuff in. I'm signing some stuff. When somebody from my flight taps me on my shoulder, they said, hey, Simmons. I'm like, yeah, what's up, man? He says, uh, you need to get back to the flight right now. I'm like, what happened? And he's like, you just need to get back right now. Sergeant is freaking out up there. I'm like, what? What's going on? So I'm like, oh, crap. I, I don't know what I did. So I just start heading back up there. We go up the stairs. We walk into my dorm. And what I see is something like a small tornado just kind of went through all my stuff. Every possession I owned was just out on the floor everywhere. All the trainees were kind of like trying to pick my stuff up, trying to like put it back together. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, what happened? What happened? They said you left your security drawer in your bed. Sergeant came out and she tore everything up. And then I hear, dorm chief. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh no. So, so my MTI comes out of her office and she's just looking at me. I've never seen someone more angry in my life. It's kind of a combination of anger and like disappointment. Like, cause she, I think she wanted me to finish. Like she honestly, she wanted me to succeed. And this small screw up not only makes me look bad, but it's gonna make her look bad because now she's gonna have to report me because now she's gonna have to report me as a security violation to her supervisor. So it was this whole big thing. I went to her office, I got some paperwork for it. Like I got in trouble for it basically. I got fired. Luckily I didn't get recycled or anything. I just got fired. I got put like back down at the bottom of the food chain. And I spent like the last two or three weeks at BMT just kind of in the mix. Like it was weird. Anyways, that's how I got fired. Luckily I didn't get recycled. Luckily I was still able to graduate on time. I lost my honor grab ribbon because I'm pretty sure I had a good chance of winning honor grad before I got fired. So I lost my honor grad ribbon. I didn't get marksman anyways. So I graduated with two ribbons. I still got my stripes, so I didn't get my stripes taken away or anything like that. So it's, it turned out okay, but I was a little upset. Like that night, I just kind of went in the bathroom and just like sat down for a while. Because I needed to get away. I needed to get away from BMT for a little bit. And I was just like, I gotta finish. I gotta push through this. Small problem. I'll get through it. This will pass. Fine. Just keep this in mind though, if you do get recycled, if you do get in trouble at BMT, ever, if somebody's in your face right now, they're not gonna be in your face in eight weeks. Once you go active duty, nobody's gonna judge you on what your performance was at BMT. What people care about is what you're doing now. What is your job performance now? Just remember at BMT, if anybody's ever like up in your face and stuff like that, like just keep your bearing. Like make sure you're listening to what they're saying. Because if they're in your face, it's, it's a reason for it. They're never gonna get in your face for no reason. Listen to what they're saying, try to fix yourself, try to get yourself better. If you're doing everything right, what are they gonna yell at you about? You're doing it too perfectly. No, if you're doing your job, if you're doing it right, if you don't mess up, you'll be fine. If you're worried about messing up, don't be because you're gonna be doing it every day. But that's pretty much it guys. If you guys have any more questions, leave them down in the comment box below. Make sure you like and subscribe to my channel. See you guys next time, peace.